faisait encore nuit lorsque la voiture de police a quitté Grenoble. The notion of a film about a chance encounter between two former lovers had long attracted François Truffaut. He had taken notes and devised a plot, but somehow the catalyst, the trigger, was missing. He had yet to put a face to the couple destined to relive their former passion. Shortly before embarking on his production of The Last Metro in 1980, Truffaut discovered Fanny Ardant in a series entitled Les Dames de la Côte, or Ladies of the Shore, directed by Nina Companese. It was love at first sight. Immediately, he cast around for a part to give her. She instantly reminded me of the Bronte sisters, he said later, whose biography had captured my imagination during the making of two English girls. To me, Fanny Ardant was like all three Bronte sisters in one. But first, Truffaut was committed to directing Catherine Deneuve and Gérard Depardieu in The Last Metro, the shoot for which took up the whole of 1980. In March 81, he attended the famous French Oscar ceremony, the César, at which The Last Metro was acclaimed with 10 awards, beating both Alain René's My American Uncle and Jean-Luc Godard's Every Man for Himself, both shot the same year. During the ceremony, Truffaut introduced Fanny Ardard, by then his partner in life, to Gérard Depardieu. The chemistry was instantaneous. At last, he had found his couple for the woman next door. From then on, Truffaut set things in motion as quickly as he could, pressed partly by Depardieu's commitments. He was available for a few weeks only that spring, being due to join Francis Weber and Pierre Richard on the set of La Chèvre, or The Goat, in Mexico. Also, having just survived the demands of making a major costume drama requiring considerable pre-production, The Last Metro, Truffaut wanted to return to a less constraining form, a contemporary setting involving a restricted cast. With his friend Suzanne Schiffman and Jean Aurel, Truffaut wrote a 40-page outline in two or three weeks, intending to embark on a shoot as soon as possible. He had, after all, been contemplating this theme for years, and now at last he had found himself an ideal couple. The Woman Next Door is the story of Mathilde and Bernard, who have, eight years previously, been lovers. Going their separate ways, they discover by chance that they have both settled in a little village outside Grenoble. Despite the passage of time, their feelings for each other remain ardent. Despite the seriousness of the theme, human passion, the shoot in Grenoble and its surrounding countryside went without a hitch, lasting only from the 1st of April to the 15th of May, 1981. Every Sunday, Truffaut would settle down to write the following week's dialogue, reinventing the narrative structure in such a way as to make a neighbor, Madame Jouve, a narrator, a nerve center of the tale. The part is beautifully performed by Veronique Silva. The opening scene, in which Madame Jouve addresses the audience directly, was shot four weeks after the rest of the shoot. Love stories, Truffaut said, are overwhelming. The world stops turning. Yet 20 years on, the memory of one's own excesses induces a smile. Madame Jouve represents a necessary detachment. Rereading love letters, one is amazed at the violence inflicted on oneself. One cannot help thinking it could all have been a lot gentler. Truffaut certainly knows how to find the right words and images to capture the essence of love. The Woman Next Door, his penultimate film, proves that beyond doubt. Eh bien, écoute, Bernard, tu tâcheras de venir pour le dessert quand même. Tu m'entends Bon, d'accord. Bernard est désolé, on va dîner sans lui.